morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Hiya, um, it's uh, it's me, it's Christopher, and uh, this I'm going to work on a page today um, that Taya I had started the other day uh, during a stream, and uh, I didn't get a chance to, to go any further with it because there was a problem with the signal last stream. Um, and what I've got on the screen right now is one of the pages that I have done in the interim because, uh, you know, objectively I want to sit down with this page with you that I uh, started uh, during, you know, in-camera session and just finish it up while we're uh, chatting. So, uh, Chalk Landscapes is one of the pages that I posted uh, yesterday. I posted uh, a couple uh, openly on the social platforms and then I put at least one more. I put one more up on uh, my Patreon as well as all the originals from the pages that I posted. And uh, I've got a little stack of, of additional ones that uh, I'll be putting on my Patreon in the next two days. So uh, I'm, right now I'm in the process of putting a, a whole bunch of uh, images up on my uh, website as well, that uh, original art for sale, and uh, little booklets and things like that. So lots of fun. Okay, uh, so I thought I'd just get right down into it and, uh, and work on this page. So this is uh, the suggestion for this page. This is a piece of blue heavy grade cardstock. I love flicking paper when you can tell how, by that sound, that resonance of it, you know how thick it is. So um, this, the suggestion for this came from Lewis. It's a town with a secret cult of people that don't age. And so uh, this suggestion, like, you know, pretty much 98% of the suggestions that come in um, are made by individuals from the stream from from the I'm sorry from the channel and uh, or from the social media pages on Instagram Facebook things like that or uh, suggestions that I get given to me during uh, conventions and whatnot so uh, I write all these down in the magic book book of tricks very shiny book shiny 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 piece of leather yeah. um, there's a uh, quite a few in here and uh, you can see how as I'm doing them I'm checking them off and I don't want to miss any so I highlight them as I go through so that uh, you know hey don't overlook that one and I go back to the earliest ones and that's where I pick from uh, just because I'm trying to get through all these from, from everybody and I'm getting some great ones in in the comments and uh, the people that have been making uh, comments in the videos in this last week um, I'm putting in for a draw for a drawing tomorrow Thursday. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, let's get uh, crack and lacking on this. So, this is all I got done. I've drawn it in white pencil. I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see it a little more clearly. Um, and uh, so, the idea of a town with a secret cult of people that don't age, the uh, first thing I tried to, to put together here was uh, some sort of general recognizable image of, you know, all town North America, right? And uh, so, with that, we got started and just grabbing something behind me. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, and yeah, there we go. Okay, so all right, so I'm just gonna get cracking on this and uh, let's see what we can do. So we've got we've established the visual of the small town. And I'm drawing in white pencil on a dark surface, which means I'm not drawing what we tr traditionally put down as the lines. Uh, I'm drawing the opposite therein. And so it's kind of a backwards way of thinking. Uh, there's a, a drawing on the wall behind me that's a, a four foot by six foot, and that's a big example of that sort of thing. So, or maybe it's three, I think it's three feet by five feet. It's four foot by five foot. It doesn't matter. So uh, I started laying out some panel shapes, and these only work in so far as uh, I want them to. You know, as I'm as I'm working, but it was just a, a rough idea I'd had in my head when uh, when I started working. So I'm gonna get my goofy face off the the, the surface here, and uh, and so that I can work on this side of the page. All right. So um, what I thought I'd do is is you know, draw, you know, some sort of stereotype images of 
Americana, you know. Uh, and when I say that, it's a broad use of a term because what I'm really talking about is the idealization of small town living North America. And I spoke to this the last video I think I put up, and that is that uh, you're hard pressed to just have this generalized image of all being represented in an in, in idea in a, an idealization like that because well first off the, the vastly different climates here in uh, in North America uh, where I live you're going to have uh, people living in relative deserts you're going to have people living in um, you know, Arctic climes, you're going to have people living in, in largely forested areas. And Canada is so vast that, uh, you know, the province that I live in is not in, is relatively flat compared to other provinces in the same country. I mean, Vancouver to, to, uh, to you know, Newfoundland, New Bra, Nova Scotia is uh, is a vast span of space, just the same as southwestern Ontario up to the Arctic Circle. <laughs> same vastly different amount of space. So you're going to see all kinds of different ways of living. But this idea of you know small town fella lady sitting at the gazebo. I don't know that this necessarily really does exist. It hasn't existed for some time. There might be people trying to hold on to the idea of it. But really, um, you're not seeing that in ways that we once did, so. So, you know, uh, but at the same time, symbolically, that's a visual image and executing that visual image in a, in a drawing sort of is a sort of a language that tells the reader we're grown up to identify oh this this idealistic scenes of you know people you know hand in hand going for a walk along the beach or or um, nice bike rides uh, along forest parks and and all of this identifiable symbolism of the leisure, leisure, comfortable, safe, secure life of uh, whether it's located in a, any kind of city context or small town or beach community or whatever it is, it's all still the same sort of symbolism. You know, we're, we're pretty, pretty basic creatures when it comes to I want to be able to see the thing that I understand and, and that's uh, that's the easy thing I'm looking for. That's I, generally readers are looking for that easy thing, you know. And you need to have, be able to, as sophisticated as you want things and as fancy as you want your world building to do, that's not going to serve general people. General people are looking for, oh, dog, you know, and uh, hey, I got that's a dog, and good, and, and you move on. And that's that's fine you know there's nothing there's nothing that's how we work you know so so we just want to try to capture any sort of basic symbolic ideas like that that we can when when we're drawing you know when we're putting down images because if that helps or and not just that not just the idealistic ones in the positive way but I, I, you know, this, this general symbolism of, you know, this is uh, something that is scary. This is something that plays on the cultural headspace, you know, where we look at this fast and quick and realize this, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. If it doesn't make sense and I find it discomforting, oh, well, there you go, I got a scary thing. There's a lot of little things that we can do uh, in our, our attempts to represent 
it, with simple marks and shapes, the, the design and the look of, of these recognizable images, situations, characters that, that just does the quick and fast work that lets our, our reader know, hey, here's where this story's going. Let's, let's move along. Let's not have to dwell on, on what this represents because there's just a sort of, th there's a part of you that understands what it represents. And you can, you can take leaps with that. And that's a wonderful thing about storytelling is that I find that those leaps, you know, the, uh, I understand the sense of isolation this person feels. Now, they might be in some sort of crazy contrived situation where they're on a spaceship and uh, they're waking up from being asleep and uh, there's nobody else on said spaceship. Uh-oh, that's not good. So even though it's like this, you know, this situation where a lot of us can't re you know, look back and go, oh, I remember that being on a spaceship and waking up feeling like that because, you know, we don't <laughs> tend to do that. You know, we haven't got that sort of uh, system in place in our in our reality here. That's a science fiction story idea. But but if you can just have a person get across the idea of a person waking up on their own in an unknown state, in an unknown, possibly unknown place, or a place where they realize maybe I shouldn't be on you know alone. If you can get those ideas across you know, then your reader can easily step into, okay, I get the gist of what's happening here. And and they can move uh, easily and readily into where your story is going to take them. And, you know, and we get to places like that by making the efforts that we do to be able to represent some kind of symbolic imagery in order to move ahead with our story and take them where we want them to go, which is, well, I guess in that context, uh-oh, spaceship full of aliens, da 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 This is why successful projects, successful films, despite whatever their uh, reality in their story is, can be very successful because they get the basic uh, sensations that we can refer to um, as as a, a general populace as a general you know refer to people like the the idea of the reference like alien I'm not making entirely too much sense here myself um, alien works because the as a film by Ridley Scott because of the fact that uh, you feel the sense of discomfort and isolation in people that, you know, are just doing their job and just going about their business. And then this foreign element is added into it. And while they have protocols and ways that they know that they should be handling it, they, they, somebody in the group forgoes those. So now that they're, they're trapped in this state of uh, confusion and uh, insecurity. And then it, they're preyed upon it, like they're in a their their place that they they uh, reside in and work in becomes a house of a haunted house, where there could be a ghost that bumps into them in any corner, and uh, and then at the same time there's that sense of you know the somebody's they're being preyed upon. There's they're being stalked by some some animal within their area and you know there's all these little different feelings and associations uh, that that come into place in that movie and so d despite the fact that it's set on a spaceship in outer space and people are having to contend with an alien element hence the name the feelings and the uh the sensations, the, the the associations that we can make in that movie all make sense to us because they, they fit into a lot of these other story types, a lot of these other story associations. So Haunted House, um, the Mankind Being Hunted, Womankind Being Hunted, you know. Um, and uh, 
the sense of the it's it's almost like it's a party you could look at it as just as well if you were to take that story and and put it in the context of here's a group of workers out in this isolated community in the middle of nowhere where they really can't go anywhere because they're they've got no means to get outside of their their spot because all of their goods are there at the spot and they're they're beholden to the company to watch those goods and and uh and so because of that they're gonna have to deal with this this foreign predator that's moved into into their camp and 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 try to to face that off and and to get you know be able to get back to status quo it, it works so successfully because of all of these different ways that you can re-envision it in other in other contexts and other and other places and other times and you know uh, it's you know the foreign alien or the here you are out in the middle of an outback or in the African plains and you've got this pile of gold there with you and your your small crew and you're being hunted by a lion you know how can you continue on with the whole we've got to get this gold lugged back to the place where we can cash it in for our money and our livelihoods without everybody dying to this lion that everybody's seeing for the first time you know it's it's uh it's it's exciting when you look at stories like that and you think of them in different different ways um the fact that i'm talking about something that is so conceptually unrelated to what i'm doing here it kind of also isn't because the idea of a town the secret cult of people that don't age you know here there's ex ex expectation which is why i'm drawing these people relaxing and sunning you know small small comfortable quaint little assembly of folks relaxing with their dog you know and uh the sense of expectation you know here's a comfortable little town here's uh some fun folks just sitting around you know piling it up and and uh relaxing in their day-to-day -day living and then uh and then we introduce that strange element and ideally because there's this expectation of understanding here's a fella and a, and a lady and, and he's got his hand on his leg and he's chatting it up over here is what i'm drawing in now and she's sitting there looking out and he's, he, oh hi hi puppy and the puppy's trying to lick her face and and uh it, it, you know we understand that them in the context of this and this idyllic setting where everything makes some sense and then what i can now do is step into in this next execution of an image is that i can step into introducing some a, a different aspect to it uh, uh, an abs uh, an aspect that is foreign to our uh, our understanding of how this works so and ideally you are going to do just the same as something like a science fiction movie where you understand that here are these laborers traveling around in this industrial vehicle where they've gone and acquired all of this this mineral material in order to to turn it over to the company which is their job and and uh and they get their their pay for the collection of all these things the, this material and and they move forward and then in comes the crazy space monster that uh, has an ulterior agenda and that is its own its own self its own survival and and it will be at the cost and expense of the characters that you know we know are just doing their job but we can associate with them because they're like us right people humans so this is what i want to get across in this image this is what i want people to 
to readily see and and associate that oh hey here's this nice setting and uh, and then we show what's wrong with it you know and and showing what's wrong with it it's now we've got a hold of our our reader ideally and the reader says wait a minute that's this is this part isn't right so so if we can uh, if we can do that successfully you know we draw them in and we've got uh, an identifiable way for them to look at our story and go ah yeah that ain't good uh oh oh boy yogi I've got a blue pencil here right now because I draw on modified paper and I'll stick tape down or I'll uh, you know I'll, I'll work uh, over there's some spattered paint on this page um, I'll show you there's another example of it down here and I'm not going to throw this piece of paper out I'm going to further the modification of it with the tape and like in order to just give it a sort of a little bit of complexity, a little bit of interest to it. And draw over top of it and work that into the composition. So now that when this this different blue appears, different blue appears like this, you still read the static image across it. But then you're like, well, why is that later? I don't, you know, and hopefully that's going to catch somebody's eye and they say, oh, that's a little more interesting to me now. You know, there's going to be people who look at it and go, well, you got that blue there, and it'll make no sense. Well, I'm not... So here's the thing about... Uh, we're telling stories, and we're doing it in our own way. And we're doing it with our own approach and our own our own style, I guess. And uh, we're, we're doing it as best as we can in our way to execute it in an interesting way. Not just for the reader, but for us. I'm not worried about the person that looks at it and goes, I don't like the light blue. I'm not worried about that. And the reason that I'm not worried about that is uh, maybe they're not my person to read the story. We gotta, as much as it'd be nice to reach out to uh, anybody out there that might potentially have some interest in what the story is that we're telling, um, you can't work for the other person you can't, honestly, even if you're doing a project for a client, you can't spend your time just doing what the client wants. Because if the client could just do what it, the thing is that they wanted, they'd do it, right? You have your approach and your facility that you've developed over some time to draw a certain way or to, to write a certain way. And as much as you want to fit somehow within the way that they're saying, well, we ideally would like it to come across as this. Great, but, you know, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do that in the style that I work and and the, the implementing the way that uh, I think that people are going to identify and associate with the project as I've illustrated it instead of just drawing this cookie cutter you know everybody draws the same way there are certain things that you find comfort in executing whatever it is that you're working on I'm a big advocate of stay with that don't don't do what everybody else wants you know the the easy association of doing you're not gonna find fulfillment in it you know I've you, you're, our core interest here is to tell the story and to try to get it across and to get it across using all those skills all those tools in your toolbox that you've developed up over time and the ones that you're still working on and growing um, and you know the more and more that you give yourself that opportunity to do that and to think things through like how is the reader going to associate this and how can I get that across? Uh, I think it's going to come through in your work. So if I do little things like this, ideally, they don't matter. 
ideally they don't f affect the overall because uh, truthfully I want them focused on these parts and if they get distracted by the weird low flourishes in a negative way that it turns them off well okay that's an audience I didn't reach because I'm doing things my own way and since I'm not working for anyone else and I'm not doing what anyone else specifically has asked I uh, well I missed the mark on that one that's okay that's completely fine but don't change uh, what you're doing and how you're doing it lean in find your voice and if it's a voice that can communicate with uh, a larger amount of people great if it isn't great you know both have a measure we live in an age where there's too much expectation for um, you know consumption and others consumption and and uh, we, we have a history as a species of the storyteller tells the story and uh, it might not always be successful at the campfire but they tell the story and they tell the story and you listen to it because they're telling the story you know so that's all right that sounds a little bit contradictory to you know in the same block of conversation to talk about hey let's uh try to get it across in a symbolic way so that our our, our readers can can connect to it and then say well but at the same time don't focus so much on just meeting the reader's demand because you've got to do it in a way that feels good for you it's a balance you can lean into your style but at the same time try to execute your style in a way that the general reader is going to understand so okay we've established our small town we've established our identifiable type of people and animals that live in this context of said small town and uh so between those two things we've got a pretty good start on where we're we're coming at this story a town with a secret cult of people that don't age um, so we can do one more thing like we can focus in we can draw down in a little bit more even if we want and that is by you know doing an image that sort of says just just with one more tight execution of uh, hi Bob hi hi Jane or here we are in the in the, the town parade or whatever and look it's a, everybody understands this and associates that this is the way it is and then in the bottom part of our page and I'll, I'll pull out the other camera so you can see the larger page um, so in the larger part of our page we're, we're selling these snippets of this idea and in this bottom part of the page we can say ha 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 but you know there's these people don't they they've been like this and they'll, they'll probably be like this in another hundred years because they don't age because they're a secret bunch of kooks you know and uh yeah that you know there could be that, that could be an approach that sort of says here this is this is where we're taking it next so so uh, I've got this panel stepping into stepping down into the space of this panel here and uh, I would do this just because I can and take this out I'm gonna figure out how the uh, the old eraser works there this is my uh, Derwent eraser, electric uh, eraser. If you can get one, boy, oh boy, they're good fun in the sun. So, uh, so now I've got this border of this panel indented in. The reason that I've indented it in instead of leaving it out to the outside edge of this one is that this distinctly separates it. You know, as much as we know that this panel sits over top of that one it still differentiates that this space isn't just it's not just bleeding in it's not expected to be one 
one larger image together. So, so you know, there, there we go. All right, so I thought, uh, let's, let me think here. What can I do for, how about kids? How about little kids playing? Little kids always sort of sell the idea of, or even better, let's, I don't know. So generally what I do is I have a whole bunch of little thumbnails kicking around me that, uh, you know, let me, uh, they're small, nice small thumbnails, but what they, they tell me is, uh, is information that, you know, you can relate to, to this thing. And I'll show you this, is what I mean, this is what's over here. It's these tiny little images and I don't let them overtake what it is that I'm drawing when I'm referring to them because I'm not trying to redraw an image, but I, I see enough of it that I can try to capture what's in there. Um, but in my own way, my own approach. So let's do people and I'm going to jump out of this panel again, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. So if I draw some characters across here and I'm just going to lightly place them in. And so I'm, if you notice that I'm trying to leave out the black lines instead of drawing them in, instead of filling them in. And then I'm going to come in with like a jelly, jelly roll pen. You know, when I come in with a jelly roll pen into the drawing and uh, I put the emphasis, that's how I pronounce emphasis. <laughs> and I put that uh, into, into the drawings and, and pop up some of those values so that uh, it more clearly, clearly defines the image. And again, once the, the more and more that I do that, then the more and more this differentiation of the light blue to the heavy blue of the tape to the heavy blue cardstock, well, that starts to not matter. You start to not notice that because you're, the white pulls your, your attention, the white pulls your focus. So, You know. All right, there we go, and uh, and I'll just keep doing that through the whole of the the image where it helps the reader to clearly recognize the elements that are in here and and, and build up a little more detail throughout it, make it a little more clear. But uh, I'd rather than doing that em emphasizing part throughout the whole of the image and pulling up the buildings in the town and so on and so forth like this like see just one more one more example uh, when I put the steeple in on the church you know and and start to define these shapes here in in the image overall then they they draw your focus and again you don't just focus on hey, what's going on with that different colors of blue you're you're pulled to the white so okay let's put uh, a bunch of people in a parade uh, you know here small town parade hi how you doing hey you know <laughs> read, uh, read an article in a magazine about how we don't have parades anymore for the most part and why is that and the person in the article, and the Can this is a Canadian article, um, the, but the person in the article was talking about, well, why did the parades really matter? What were we, what were the parades about? And uh, the argument is basically that we were just sort of celebrating us to celebrate ourselves, really. And like basically arguing that it's celebrating mediocrity. Maybe, but it is celebrating a, an appreciation of time and place and your fellows and accomplishments or uh, identification of the larger group. There was a whole bunch of benefits out of, of, of parades, and especially small town parades where it's always interesting who's actually not in the parade in a small town parade. <laughs> 
know, who's who's looking at the parade of your your peers and your neighbors? Hey, what are you doing? Oh, it's Bob down the street. You know, that's uh, that there's uh, Mrs. Jenkins who teaches our kids in in the the local school. You know. But it's a recognizable sense of, of community, larger community. And uh, we, we're losing that, you know, and now we're doing parades. We're pretty much darn near anything at this point. And it's strange. It's kind of strange to me that uh, this article was saying, you know, parades are so done. And then the complaint, of course, is that all we do in parades now is for whatever this this uh, thing and that thing and as opposed to celebrating you know the astronauts uh, I don't know it's just uh, it's again just celebrating a sense of connection and community and, and uh, I think parades are fine and parades are something that a lot of us can look at and go hey parades especially the people of a certain age but it used to be far more I mean parades were so super common you know this group and that group and this group and that group and, and all of them in the town parade and we don't really have you know once you get into a large enough community like a city you don't have the city the parade celebrating the city's turned another year older whereas you'll see more of that in smaller towns and I think it's to be celebrated personally Good. People need to associate these ideas, this sense of community or what this symbolizes, and because it makes people feel some kind of connection to that. I don't know, maybe it is uh, like this article is basically saying celebrating mediocrity. I don't know. But, uh, I, you know, I think that we need to celebrate people. So, it's a tricky thing, parades. But I can get, I can draw something like that and people look at it and go, oh, it's parade. At least in this you know, in this the place that I live in this 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 world uh, in North America, there don't be other parts of the world where they see these. Uh, there's a, a fuller figured lady, and I'm gonna have her pulling her kid on a wagon <laughs> through town, <laughs> waving hello, and waving him back at somebody over her shoulder. Oh, so hi, so and so. Um, what, what's that all about? Well, that's all about, you know, small town fun, right? Small town parade. They might not get it because that has never been something where they are. That's fine. Every story can't speak to everybody. There's a difference between trying to just get across ideas that are generally understandable in a context and then primal ideas like you know, it's in a, something like alien or, or, or isolated place you shouldn't be. Monster, you know, something to fear in the dark. But family gives people a sense of connectedness and, you know, town, community gives people a sense of connectedness, so we're banking on that. Okay, so we've got uh, this one coming in here. So we get the second person in, it's marching with their hands at their side. And then uh, the tricky part would be trying to put the small town 
street here of people sitting on the, uh, along the pavement watching us. And these people march along for whatever reason. The donut parade, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So I'm just building up these characters as I go through. Um, while I'm doing that, you know, if your people are still here, I think, uh, <laughs> I guess I never know. Um, you know, I'll encourage again, if you have a, a story idea that comes to mind, a quick sentence, a town with a secret cult of people that don't age, something like that, you know, or just three words, um, you know, I did a page this year called um, based on Red Panda, Marigold, and Periwinkle. You know, and uh, I did a page based on uh, another page based on a horse playing a guitar, riding a bicycle along the edge of a fourth parallax. Yeah, so that's uh, those are very different uh, suggestions. <laughs> And yet, at the same time, uh, part of the fun is to to look for a story that implements some of these these elements, these suggested elements. You know, well, horse playing guitar, riding bicycle, pretty straightforward visually. Um, periwinkle, marigold. Those are colors or flowers or different associations. Red panda. Well, it's a red panda. You know. So, you know, the very different ideas and how we go about finding a story about those. Or about, I'm sorry, a story that incorporates those different uh, suggested ideas. And that's, that's the journey. That's the joy. That's why I'm not interested in doing scripts or doing really elaborately, you know, I'm not, I'm, even if people say, here's all the specific instructions, I'm not doing them. <laughs> I won't do them like that. Because I'm looking for the story to tell in there. I'm not looking to, you know, when I do jobs and illustrate books for people of uh, a specific script because I'm hired, paid, you know, the money to draw that specific a script. Even then I'm going to interpret it visually my own way, but there's uh, a lot to be said about looking for the story and finding the story instead of just regurgitating what's given. There's nothing wrong with drawing specifically from script and working for for somebody else or, or paying gig. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I do it. But, um, you know, I, I don't understand only doing that. How can we... Uh, I, 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 visual people, we tend to have a lot of imagination going on there that uh, should not be dependent on when you associate enough ideas maybe the structure of those ideas coming together in a story from somebody else help you but you should not be reliant on having to have a script or a fully prepared story for you to do it because you're not going to put in the effort that you need to put in that uh, from the visual end to pull this together to bring this all up and and uh, you know all the different elements that you need to add the little flavors of you well, you won't do that if you're just regurgitating like I said said script it's a uh, sequential media you know like what I'm doing here with drawing a story visually as well as telling a story textually, the incorporating of text throughout this to, to tell our narrative and to enhance the visual elements that aren't included, there would be no point in telling, putting text down of, of elements that I've already got illustrated in 
into the panels. This is a parade. It doesn't work, right? So we're looking for that fusion of those two things. Where is it going? Well, I think that I've got to be able to representatively draw these all these elements and in, into to start telling the story visually. And I can't do that if I'm reliant on a a writer. Writers, if they could draw, they'd they'd be doing they'd be doing the drawing part of it too. I'm not dismissing writers in general. I'm just saying that this is a primarily visual medium. So it wins. <laughs> the things that we try to get across visually win. And uh, there are writers that, or I'm sorry, there are artists that require, you know, assistance from a writer to try to come up with some visual element of that. But you know you want to add to it you don't want to just lean on it so this is me drawing a little a little Timmy in the wagon and so you know little Timmy's gonna pop through uh, below the panel just like these ladies legs have and uh, and as I'm drawing Timmy in I'm drawing in this larger city street st scene you know and I'll have uh, you know another gal walking up there we go so So we'll put Timmy's little face in here. Get his little hands here as he's mucking about with whatever he's got. To find this little chair that he's leaning on or back position that he's leaning on. We'll put a sign you know hey congratulations whatever it says on the side of the sign but we'll hang a sign off the side of this wagon and we'll put a little blanket in here and we'll get some more of these elements from the, the handle of the wagon in There we go. So, ideally, that's going to sell it. That, uh, there we go. Alright. So, I better go back to this side. Because I don't want to draw too much of this and then smudge it out. So we'll go back to this side and put in another person. Happy, happy. Big smiles. There we go. And then we'll put start putting in some people in the background some pieces of building, things like that. Stro here's a stroller. With, uh, a little baby in the stroller here. And a post from a building front. But the idea here isn't to focus the eye on. We want people looking at these people in the foreground. So these are really rough, lightly penciled in people's shapes as opposed to 
overly defining all the people because from a storytelling perspective this is the part that we add as this is the part that I'm referring to is the, the not taking away from writers when I say that this is the this is what you're bringing is that you know as much as though you'll have somebody describe oh you want a crowd of people on the side of the road watching the watching the event okay yes but um, I know from a visual sense that they can't be so readily defined so so clearly drawn in that you're more concerned about them than you are trying to just focus on what we're just getting across and that's people marching through the street they're just all they're there to facilitate is that they're a crowd gathered to watch those people parading through the streets we're trying to sell the idea of the parade more so than we're trying to readily define all these folks or these businesses or buildings we're just trying to get the gist of them across as it serves our narrative and that's the fun thing about how we stylistically approach stuff is that you'll do things that the next person won't do that's why you're brought in to visually tell this story because you've developed some some degree of ability to be able to do that in this way you know what are we at? how long have I been going? oh, we're doing good time I think folks if you're still here watching I hope that you're appreciating uh, in any drawing stuff I might be able to put across but the turn is the most important part of this page it's one thing well that's arguable because it's it, we want to clearly define everything for the readers we want people to be able to comprehensively understand that this is small town parade where people are gathered along the streets and and watching you know as this assembly moves across you know but really we want to get this across just so much as when we do the reveal of oh there's a it's a secret crazy cult of people you know there's a couple different ways you can do that like you can have uh like, wouldn't it be fun? And, and, and you know, it, it's a fun idea to take a, a story based in some degree of reality and to push that farther along. What I mean by that is, like, if, sorry, I have to adjust myself here because my back is starting to get sore. Um, you've got uh, some identifiable part that we understand small town community watching a parade but if you introduce real world ideas and then expand upon those like and this isn't any thing against uh, Mormon people but uh, but those community or Mennonite communities but when you've got this community that has this identifiable form of dress which differentiates itself from the societal whole at the time and uh, this community has its very specific cultures and, and, and uh, things that are different than the, the larger culture that they're within well that is you know the other and perhaps you can use that and lean farther into it to take the already existing other and uh, and there we go and enhance on it in such a way that you can now make it much much stranger and uh, I don't. There's a lot for that. There's a lot of interesting uh, things that we can make out of that. Sorry for the squeaking. So, so the this community of people, all the girls and boys dressed the same, and you know, uh oh, they're so different, and they're with their uh, charming and different different ways and they're a nice bunch of folks and 
And uh, they're all werewolves. See, that's the turn. And it's not to dismiss groups like Met Knights and stuff like that or to diminish their world. I'm just saying that for X amount of a society that doesn't really understand or they, they know enough that these people all fit in this way of their perception of the world and their the greater perception of the world by the larger society. Well, they're, they're different in this regard. Well, if you take that as a starting point and build build upon it, you can find so, so much more story-wise that uh, is, is prime space to develop, to plumb. A good, uh, a good writer, whether you're, you know, because you're a sequential illustrator, you're developing up some degree of writing so that you can facilitate more interesting narratives around the images that you're drawing. But a good writer tries to, you know, comprehensively understand story in general around them and uh, figure out ways to to take that farther like whether it's incorporating those elements within their own their own pieces or or to to take those uh, stories that they've they've witnessed or that they've read about or they've you know, heard of and uh, and enhancing them more within their own narrative so that I heard about a really interesting story about, you know, this, that lady was with a, a larger group traveling across the, you know, the, this mountainous range and they're getting picked off one by one by a cougar. Again, I'm going back to the alien motif for me examining it and uh, but she you know shored herself up and and used uh, all of her wits and her her own ingenuity and figured out a way to take down that cougar and uh, and our story leaves with her still traveling through this this region trying to get to the place that they were all going before so it leaves us uh, an avenue for the next chapter of our story. It doesn't mean we have to tell it now. Maybe it's more interesting that we're not telling it. Maybe there's something to be said for it to be compelling that we're not defining the rest of her story so that um, the reader's left to take where we've left it and imagine where it could go. Is she gonna be okay? Is she gonna, you know, is there another m cougar that she's gonna come across? Like, does, did the cougar have a mom? You know, little little ideas that ideally the writer, the reader is now uh, incorporating into their own imagination and, and, and it leaves that story with them so that they wonder, I wonder how that, what would have happened to that lady next? This is, this is how we can, this is really why we, we can have sequels is that somebody has set it up in such a way as to say, you know, hey, this, this can be developed further. And ideally they come along and they do so in a successful way that follows the the world perspective of how the first story was put together without uh, you know maligning everything that came before and undermining it we can, let's just build on it and uh, and find that next the next part of that exploration you know here's the town where she was going to and if you can't get if you can't get that character to continue with that character for whatever reason, 
well, why don't you talk about next door? You talk about uh, she was uh, traveling with this the larger group to go and meet up with her husband, who's been working with the railroad, and uh, he's set up a nice house and and a, a situation for them based on working this company. She was going to join him in that adventure, uh, but she's not come in and. He cares for her very much, so he's going to try to go out and find her. And then, you know, he could find himself over his head from some other aspect of this unknown, you know, larger world of maybe there's the, the local population that uh, don't uh, want him or his railroad coming through here and they're a lot of the railroad workers have been disappearing as well. And uh, so he falls a prey of that. And who rescues him out of the blue? But his wife, who's clearly taken on some, some skill sets from what she faced in our first story and uh, what she's faced and developed with her, within herself, and what skills that she's picked up in order to survive and not just that that first story but the environment she's in so you know there there you can go you connect it back to our first story but at the same time you do so in a more a, a whole new way where you've got you've switched this expectation of form sorry i'm having a, a drink as well by basically having the masculine character as the damsel in distress or uh you know and which just cements for the reader our viewer, the strength and conviction of our lead character from the first part of the story just reinforces that, you know, by not having the great, the great husband break out into the wilderness and finds his poor wife. Oh, the cougars! Because that completely undermines the character buildup you did in the first story and, uh, with having her to have the resources and facility to save herself from the previous situation. So you don't want to do that. You also don't want her to show up and suddenly, you know, it's five days have gone by from her first story and she shows up as she's got a, you know, a quiver of arrows on her back and a bow and she's now wearing pants and she's, you know, chewing jaw and spitting on the ground going, will you come out here to find me, husband? Because again, you've maligned the character. You've changed her too much from where the journey where we were with her in the first one is just too far right so it's yeah there's different things we can do okay so i'm going to i want to play with depth i think here so yeah i think that what i'll do is i'm gonna you know, I've already redefined the extent of the panel, right? And we've moved it over to here. But let's take it down a little bit farther. Let's have this uh, we'll put this young character, this young mother in here who's playing with her little one. Playing helicopter, I guess. I don't know if you know about kids, but kids will swing, They'll hang on your arm, and you'll swing them a little bit. Look, I'm in a helicopter. So we'll do that with mom. And then we'll have the little one, and then she will hang down into this the the drop part right like if i put we've got our line across the base here for the extent of you know this image here but then we've got our lower tier of it where the lady's legs and it see that tells me that uh i need to put in a little bit more of a little bit more of the wagon and uh, and then we'll, we'll bring the 
to sign out a little bit more. But this stays defined up here. But we know now that uh, the drop line is over here. So by that extension, we'll move over to there on this side. And then when we do our next panel, you know, it's uh, we can either have these characters bleed into it, or we just drop that line right below it in the same spacing, ideally as uh, as up here. So while these these four points don't touch to what's going on below them, you know, there is the idea that they're moving down towards it. So okay, so let's finish this little one. And we're doing pretty good time. So I'll get one more, I think, element uh, to get in here. Or I'll just speed up how I'm drawing. Just Let's just move it, move ourselves along. So I, I, I don't know about when other people draw, but I do a lot of thinky thinking as I'm putting these marks down and ways of exploring the marks that I'm making so that ideally the reader is I'm going to try to get across some of the things that I need to get across so that the reader understands what I'm trying to do what I'm trying to say what I'm trying to get them to understand So her elbow peeks out over this border that we've established as well. And yet, I'm going to put in these marks to put the rest of her, her hips and her legs within. I don't need her whole form peeking out because I want to try to still define the edge of this panel, the edge of this shape. There, like so. So now I've got her. There we go, we got her a little more clearly defined within the context of what we're trying to tell in our image, but at the same time within the, the frame of reference of the panel. And so this helps me to define the whole of the the shape and making sure I put the foreground in first then helps me and when I'm going to develop the crowd in behind, I'm developing the information behind the, you know, after I've defined the foreground so that uh, they're not bleeding into it in any way. Now there's other times where I'll I'll draw it purposely to have them bleed into parts of you know one part of a drawing will bleed into another. I do that all the time. Um, 
the page that I showed earlier of, uh, let's see, this one, I mean, that bottom image bleeds right into the one above it. So, and the, you know, the checker uh, squares bleed over top of the, the same composition. So it's, you can use that in different ways. So we'll just, whoops, I'm so sorry. We'll just clearly uh, put a little more detail into this person's form without it becoming like some superhero comic person of ridiculous proportions. And uh, it's not how real people work. It's not how fabric works. So we'll get some of those. Here you go, we'll get these folds in here and define our character in this way. Okay, so there they are, which means now I go in as I've been doing with the crowd, and I just fill in some more of this shape language. So I've got this play of space. So I've got the people in the back. I've got this young person running into the road. I've got this lady and her little one, which are clearly closer to us than these two ladies and this little one. And uh, I'm just playing with the space in general as we're drawing Small Town Parade. And then because it's such a simple shape a bunch of shapes that we're putting together in order to associate the crowd we can add when we add in some white line to this like we've done in the panel above we'll define a few more characteristics and contrasts and faces and things like that there we go so and we'll that up. So there we go. We've got the three different parts. Small town. You know the the life of ease. Here's a oh here's a nice parade happiness, and uh, and I so I guess uh, you know with the remaining part of the page, and I'll pull out to the other camera so we can look at the overall. So we've got half of the page is in now, and half of that page is selling, selling the. Uh, the context of our narrative and uh, and then now the bottom part of the page is going to malign it really by the second part of the suggestion the town okay the town secret cult of people that don't age so so now you know I guess there's different ways that we can explore that and one of those different ways that we can explore that is having um, you know, let's draw a bunch of, and this is, you know, again, this is means nothing outside of this story, and it's not some statement I'm going to make on on seniors. But one of the things that I can do here now is we've already got these quaint setups of this vitality of this community and. And all of these people within it but what if I take the another part of that which is like the seniors in the in the, in the small town here and uh, I, I push their I over accentuate their their faces like here's this wrinkly old 200 year old like there's there's people amongst them who are just so clearly they've been around for a while that's what I'm trying to get across you know and then I'll have and I've put the smaller box down at the bottom and for the, basically like a summation of how this comes about now this light penciling in that I've done of this this frame as I've shown before 
having penciled in what I penciled in earlier. That, uh, that doesn't mean that's the hard fast rule. We've already got this panel stepping you over. So you're reading here, we read to the right, and then it just draws you right back down into this visual part of the narrative. And uh, so now I get to, you know, a kind of big stack of pictures of senior people and little thumbnails. And, uh, you know, we'll just start putting them in and, and oh, happy, happy seniors. And, oh, no, you know, maybe not, Yogi. So, yeah, I think uh, I'll figure out the size of the panel, but I think it's going to be roughly centered, you know, they're going to draw up into the center of these, these folks. You know, and then we'll just make it more and more. We'll start with a nice bunch of seniors, and then we'll make that next image of the seniors to start to distort a little bit. And then by the bottom, it's like, you know, we're, but we're still trying to sell that small town aesthetic. So by the bottom of the page, it'll be spooky, scary face, right? Okay, well, I've been going for uh, an hour 15, and uh, so, but we've got, uh, we've already established the first half of our page, and uh, I think that's a, a great spot to put a, a break on things here for a moment, and uh, and that way that you don't feel obligated to watch for ungainly amounts of time, but, and then I'll continue this as the next video where uh, we're going to push the the elements on this page okay so thank you uh very much for for coming and joining me and uh yeah watch for the next video